Fos Rov, Kadi and Tashka Kyol Dilkasharan, you're very welcome to the Irish Traditional Music Archive uh, for the first of a new series called The Given Note. I'm delighted to welcome Kunla Grada and Quivin O'Farrell, who are going to play some music for us, uh, speak about their background, and get into a little bit of detail about their, their approach to their practice. So, without further ado, we'll hand over to, to Conal, who's, um, I believe you're going to start with uh, one of your own compositions. I start with Wooden. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's a pair of jigs. Uh, the first one is called Kushkane, sorry, the first one is called Pispasa Pegasa, and the second one is called Kushkane Machine. Fantastic, yeah, brilliant. Um, there, you, gonna, could you talk a little bit about um, about your background in music and how you, where, where does yeah, it all I'm go back to? All, yeah. um, I started off, like a lot of people do, in the Tindersley Band in school, in uh, School of Ballon Optics in, in, in Cork City. And I really liked it straight away, you know. And I see that when I'm teaching myself sometimes, like you see kids who just love it, like, so I was like that. So my father decided he'd, um, take me along to the Cork Piper Club where me and Ray would be teaching and he took all of us along every Saturday night and there'd be classes from about eight to nine and then there'd be then the old the heavies come in <laughs> and uh, they'd start playing and we'd kind of listen and play with them if we knew the tunes and we'd do a bit of Katie Benson and all that kind of stuff so that was around I suppose ten I started start when I was about seven I started going to the Piper's Club when I was about maybe eight or nine and um 
that's what I started. And then I was playing at a flat hole, actually, a Munster flat hole, Tim Mistel under 12, I think it was. And Seamus McMahona, who I think might be looking in, I love Seamus, um, was the adjudicator. And he came up to me afterwards and asked me, had, did I ever think of playing the blues? And that he was living in Cork and Black Rock at the time. And uh, well, I, got, I was welcome to call out and visit him. So I did. And um, I got a flute. And I was called out to Seamus. And he'd sit down and he'd play for me. And he'd also play all spoon to spoon tapes that he had of um, a lot of the great players. Seamus was great, actually, because at subsequent flat shows, you'd meet up with him and he'd, he'd introduce you to people, you know. So, like, people you had no right to meet there. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, when I was about 14, I was standing at the bar with Jardy Hanna, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold his hand while he sang at me, like, you know. It was like, so it was great. It was kind of a level of access that you, you couldn't have expected, you know. And yeah. I'd be eternally grateful for him for providing that, you know. Yeah. Because the people you met were so inspiring, you know. They were so good and... I did, there was no f other flute players. Seamus moved away shortly after that, so there was no. I didn't have any flute teacher or, or even someone I could hang around with. Like so, yeah. any time I went to those places, you know, if I could sit in next to Peg McGrath, I did. Like you know, and yeah. if they talked to me, well, by God, I wore the ear off him. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Way, like. So that was it. And then when I got a bit older, um, and did you teach yourself then at that point, or was yeah. it was a form? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just listening and and playing and trying to copy people. Like, yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. So it was shame as a, a kind of a, a like mentor or something yeah, that introduced yeah. you to people and then and then exactly. head home yeah. feeling inspired and figure things out for yourself. Exactly, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Plan records then and play along with them and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and then I suppose um, another great influence would have been Jackie Daly. Mm. Jackie Daly and um, they just come to the house after a, I was too young actually. I used to be in bed and uh, they just come on a Friday night after the court session himself and Charlie Piggott. Seamus Cray, Pat Red or Southern in the box, and a few more. They played at a small role. My father used brew beer and that's the clue, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd be mean, listening, it was great. And Jackie was like Jackie was like a rock star back then, you know? Yeah. He was just brilliant. Like, I mean, anywhere Jackie played was a huge crowd. Yeah. And Jackie was another fellow who was very good for me to me because um he'd come into a room and Jackie'd be playing and he'd look up and he'd see and he'd nod there. Yeah. So he'd yeah. put you on his right hand side, you know? Yeah. So you could hear every note he played and he could tell you what he was gonna do and Learn a fortune, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exciting time in Cork then as yeah. well. Quite a nucleus of yeah of uh, great musicians was, around yeah. the same age. Would, uh, you're going to play a few more of your compositions, I believe. Next, yeah, episode. I play a couple of reels. Um, the first one is called uh, Kung Fu Katie, uh -huh. and the second was called The Karate Kid. After um, uh. Karate Kid is a uh, Lee, get the connection, Bruce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he was he's about three now, and um. My youngest brother's child, and uh, so I composed the, the, the read for him because he had his fists up mm. when he was a young fella, and I just composed the second one and named it just to, to pair it, you know? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, they're they're dynamite. Um, how, how do you go about composing tunes? Uh, <laughs> is there yeah, or is there any pattern or formula to it at all? There's, there's kind of, there's sometimes a pattern. Like sometimes you just kind of think of a, of one bar or two bars that you think that would be catchy. Like, mm. so you you can kind of build a tune around them. The rest of it is dross, but they're two nice bars, and that kind of works, you know. Yeah. More times you start a tune and you put it away after a week, and you come back to it like nine months later, like yeah, and it's still rubbish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do you do you compose like with the flute at hand, or are you out for a walk, or or where? No, I'm usually out for a walk or like driving. Yeah, mm. I find or I, I walk the dog every morning up the hill at the back at home, and um, that's usually a fairly productive time for me. You know? mm. I bring the phone with me. Yeah, and I groan into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, if I'm driving, I do the same thing. You know. Yeah, I wonder what the penalty points are for that. Like, it's funny actually because I'm a very tuneless lilter. Like, All right. so I lilt the tune and then I have to kind of go like, um, miso so 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 miso, so uh, <laughs> just yeah, so yeah. I can kind of pitch it somewhere. Like, you know, yeah, know what, what notes were intended because otherwise it's very hard to decipher. But that's it, yeah. Um, I suppose a lot, a lot of the inspirations I take would be like from nature or from folklore or mm. that kind of stuff. You know. Generally, yeah. the the real world anyway, you know. Yeah, and are there correlations? Do you compose the tune first and then the title, or are there ever does it ever work the other way around? Generally, it's the tune first, yeah, mm. and then you'd make up a title that would give you plenty to say on the stage. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of plenty to say on the stage, yeah, uh, <laughs> will you introduce the next one? It's a <laughs> the next one, yeah. The next one is an air actually. It's um, I compose it on my brother. Dunnacha, who passed away there three, nearly three years ago now, poor devil. Um, it's called Darka on Egg Griv, which translates as the Raven's Opinion. Fitting way to 
remember right there, your, your brother done it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, area. Yeah. We were speaking the other night about in the context of Tommy Potts as well. Um, but music for traditional musicians at times been, can serve a function as a kind of a, a, a release of emotion or a therapeutic um, uh, effect as well. Yeah, it's almost like a vessel, like it kind of holds things for you, you know? Yeah. yeah. I found that generally that it's a, you know, yourself when you lose someone, mm. kind of in kind of tragic enough star circumstances, like he was quite young, you know, 33. Mm. And in fact, Lee, that the real was for, mm. he's now three. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. All, all part of the, the yeah. art of the tradition too and um, yeah Queeveen uh, Foster Oates <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, Queeveen I'd, I'd love to get uh, your your insights into how you accompany so well in, in um, you do an amazing job there of track and Connell of course for those of you that don't know Queeveen's a spectacular flute player Piper, whistle player, Shano singer, guitar player, bazooki player. I texted someone earlier on to say to give them the heads up about this concert, and um, I said, "Oh, such a man, Queevee, that plays a hundred instruments, <laughs> and, he, said, and he's brilliant on the ball." Uh, I've seen him dance though. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Queevee, could you tell us a little bit about you, your background and how you yeah. um, came to, began playing traditional music? Yeah. And um, when I started on the whistle, like it, like. A lot of other than um, Bobby Gardner used to come to the school and we, uh, and we went all around Waterford and Tipperary teaching, but he taught me the whistle and David Power mm. taught me the pipes and then I suppose coming to the guitar then, I was probably maybe 13 or 14 when I started mm. on that and it was only to kind of figure out um, the chords, like I was doing music in school and uh, Oni Kalle was the mm -hmm. principal at the school and teaching us the basic triads and stuff like that. And then there was a guitar at home, so I um, ended up just messing about. And she was telling me about this dad gadget tuning <laughs> that I uh, heard nothing about anyway. And I knew nothing about guitar, but I uh, started listening to, I suppose, uh, Danu were a big influence in our house. And um, so like Noli Ryan, who was playing with Danu at the time, um, and then later on, listening to Donald and Clancy, um, and then I suppose like I got introduced to players like Artie McLean, who was on Connell's first mm. album, The Top of Home, and some of that, some of them are just my favorite players, uh, and takes so much inspiration from their backing. Like, like it's not too, it's not intrusive. You're just trying to sit behind the melody and um, not to force anything but but I suppose like in the case of Connell's playing he, you know he's a strong player and uh, yeah. if I was playing too softly um, I might mightn't fit either like I'd have to give it a give it a little bit of punch or something maybe if you know what I mean but the Kung Fu yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. but uh, yeah I suppose playing with Connell especially I'd, I'd be thinking about um, a lot about Artie's backing um, and there was just such a like he kept he kept it rolling along like he, he didn't have to do an awful lot like he a lot of the time he kept the chords simple but mm. um, just kept it going the, in the, like a good solid rhythm and not to uh, not to go astray or put the player astray or anything um, if you know what I mean yeah. um, it's hard to explain. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Yeah, I think you did a yeah. nice job yeah. explaining that. That's uh, very insightful. Yeah, yeah. and uh, speaking of um, uh, tricky rhythms and, and trying to track someone, uh, you're going to do a set of hop jigs now. Um, which jigs, yeah. I think you, you must. How many hop jigs have you composed at this stage? From, Just know? these are the only two. So, yeah, it's still, <laughs> still probably a high percentage of the, the overall hop canon of hop jigs in the, yeah. the Irish tradition. It's funny, they almost sound like can't be more than jiggy, don't they? But yeah. They're funny tunes, yeah. 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 They're a bit of fun now. Yeah. What, what are they called? Uh, the first one is called Cusa on the Gogoiga, which is um, the butterfly's pathway. And the second one is Prabfort Ellie Vicklin. Ellie Vicklin is the ghost in my house. Uh -huh. So, um, who kind of knocks around the place upstairs at a fierce rate, like, right. and uh, so just going on. <laughs>
Well, um, for those of you uh, at home, and all the, particularly for the musicians out there that are hoping to learn these tunes as well, Connell, you're involved in, in a, um, a series we have here called Say Her, which features a composer in the tradition each each month. Uh, so a lot of your these tunes you're performing today yeah. would, <clears throat> would be available as, as digital scores and as interactive scores and PDFs and uh, sort of... I might uh, say people, uh, if they wait another week or two, they'll be able yeah. to have uh, all these learning resources. Um, can I talk about the, how has the last year been for you but as professional musicians? I mean, it's it, COVID came out of the, came with a bang and out of the blue. And uh, how did, how was your year? Yeah, um, I suppose it was very quiet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah no gigs for for months and months and i hadn't been teaching either like um like all before the covers came like uh, i was kind of coming and going here and there to festivals and over to the boston and stuff like that um and i was constantly on the go so i couldn't have couldn't be committed to any lessons so uh so i had nothing for ages and ages but thankfully just a couple of months ago i started teaching for music generation watford uh pipers there um but yeah, apart from that, I hadn't had much of a chance to, to play properly and like, yeah. I, I feel like kind of out of practice, especially on the guitar. No, I haven't backed anyone in yeah, <laughs> so yeah. long. Yeah. Hanging in there. It, you made great use of your time though too. I know it was a sudden, mm. uh, a double whammy really for touring yeah. musicians as mm. well. And uh, but you, you were yeah. read making as well. Yeah, I, I took the opportunity to like, to hone in on the read making. I started, uh, maybe a year before it all the COVID started, um, went to a couple of workshops with Mick O'Brien and Louis Prior and um and watched loads and loads of videos. Luckily Nabib Reelan have loads of read making videos from a DVD they put out a couple of years ago that the heart of the instrument and they're all available on their ar archive there. Um so like watching Benedict Kohler and um Killian O'Brien or Jeff Wolf, all of them making reads, and I just kind of got addicted to that. <laughs> nearly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did it day and night for I don't know how many months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah. So it's, it's great to be able to look after your own reads, and um, if anything goes wrong, or if you if you crack one, that you can just yeah make one or help other people out. Like locally, um, I was able to help a couple of friends out around home, like so. Um, yeah. yeah, and you, you have a new flute uh, on the way as well. It, it? Yeah, it arrived as well. Uh, thankfully, you now I got a lovely Allwell flute. Um, thanks to Music Network and the the capital music capital scheme, um, funded by the Arts Council. You, you know yourself and um, Department of Tourism, Arts, Gaeltacht, Culture, Sports and Media. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to remember it all, but um. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the flute, but yeah, everything I've been doing lately has been pipes related. So yeah, um, so looking forward to doing something with the new flute in in the future. Like, so yeah. um, great, great. Uh, and how about you, Connell? How is? Yeah, I suppose my kind of livelihood was was kind of based around playing and teaching and, and a few more things like that. So um, when the when the shutdown hit, like I just had to. I was lucky that I was teaching online anyway. But the fast work of my teaching would have been face to face. So I was very lucky that I was able to move that online and people came with me, like, well, that was good. But it meant that, you know, for any of the holidays, like the summer times, I'd normally either, you know, teach at festivals or do gigs or whatever, or I run this course myself as well, which is um, a big part of my, my summer work. So that all that was canned this year and mm. last year. Um, I play with a show called Nota Stota. Um, and we were to make our debut tour that, 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 that autumn and of course we had to cancel that as well but um, what we did in the interim then was instead of doing our live tour we um, were making 12 short films and that's going very well we're actually starting filming later on this week down in down your neck of the woods on mm -hmm. the County Watford mm -hmm. so that's kept us very busy as well doing our latch you know so we filled the time but um, yeah you just kind of have to you have to think up, you have to reinvent, like you kind of think, so up, up, how can you kind of use what you have in a different way, you know? Yeah. But it's, um, it's very difficult for people, you know? Mm. Like, yeah. yeah. 
And you were ahead of your time, I think, when you said about moving your operations online or about 20 years ago when the internet was in its infancy. You, you had skull trad, wasn't it? That's and, right, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it was, a, it was a bit kind of... It's the right idea. Yeah, just, the just you were too far ahead. It's a bit like, yeah, yeah. I think James Joyce opened the, the first cinema in Dublin and no, it didn't take off at all. And then 20 yeah. years later, it was, well, it was we did, we, Yeah, if, even, like, I know that didn't work for us, but we, we, we had some great times on that. We, we mm. did a feature on Tommy Peoples, actually, which, yeah. um, it, and it's amazing. So no one's seen it. Yeah. And it's really cool. Like, Tommy came down to Cork and we, we recorded him in, in an empty pub in Coachford. And it was... It was stunning, like, but you know, we did a few, few, few more musicians like that, but Tommy's the one that stands out to me. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was, it was yeah. out of favour. Uh, oh, uh, but, but this is over, we'll be uh, getting you to, to, to yeah. consider <laughs> signing that over to the archives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you're going you're gonna to play another set of jigs for us, um, yeah. what are these? Uh, the first one is called, um, what's it called? And she I think. The one. And uh, the second one is called, um, second one is called, Maiden and Malafuck Vos Cree, which is kind of a magic title because the alliteration follows through from Irish to English. So Maiden and Malafuck Vos Cree, MMM, into the murderous maidens of Muscree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I married to one of them. <laughs> but, do, um, do, do you want to dedicate that? <laughs> yeah, I dedicate, dedicate this one to Juliet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. 
to play another air for us, Connell? Uh, I am, yes. yes. What's the background to this uh, one? This is called Tarngrot Nakali Dove, which is the, uh, the prophecy of the, the black hag. No, if she doesn't exist, this kind of one I made up myself. There's plenty of other hags around to do. And Kalach Bear, I don't myself and all that. But this is um, it's an imaginary hag. And I suppose it's, it's, it's one I wrote really, like, you know, you'd be, be out fishing or whatever, and you realize that, you know, the fishing isn't half as good as it was when you were young, you know. And it's just kind of basically a reflection on the, it's kind of an environmental song. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, just the biodiversity and that, and it's just... A lot of it has been, especially, you know, I, I live in a beautiful area and it's been just destroyed by forestry, you know, it's Sitka, it's, it's, um, spruce forestry. And I can see it like you see them planting it and within five years, you know, there's not going to be a bird, an insect, a plant, an animal in there. It's all going to be gone, you know, so it's that kind of just, it's kind of a dark piece. Yeah. <laughs> I give it a go. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'm going to say that. 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 I'm going to say that.
you know, it's, it's fair to like, like the, the turning to pictori them, not not that in them and bear an echo, you know, shakas on murderous maidens of Muscri. Okay, I saw so much in, like, well, Takesht Elegum, this was well, Kane uh, Mullavek, I got the, the Voldemort, I got the Dean Yoga, I got the Dull uh, Mun, and also all of them. Yeah, um, well, the Dean, I know, just, just, just Kleesh, you know, Dene, I guess Dene Peerite is Feder, I guess Keiko Minikis is Feder, like, be a casa, the the Hishmaori, the uncle, the auntie, and the nans, like, Gachokai parties, Gachrod, you know, just, just, bring you side us, you know, it's been ten of us. Um, three couple of blind, you know, what had to go and lesh, just you know, big ish duck, five oldish, oldish co co far as August is fair let, you know. Um, Tosnius, if any, are bottom more fluid, like you mm-hmm. know, so need to share and divide, you know, one of your size rolls of rice ago to Achem, you know, August ish duck le, Ladini, Achem, be a casa, be a clachter, August go higher. Kind of like a salt of bindas, you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess Quivey and Vecchi and Troar got the the Dini Oga. Yeah, it's just like a guy shot le le gahinga like a yoha air like yoha ready a gaulum a few or mana danin nikavatori let mahata guy shot le tina ach better go go bukham a mach for the against like air of the record like hun usada. It it a good change in uh, like I really love them so kind yeah. uh, g- of a kind of a like dismissive yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like a, yeah it's, it's still, just just very guy shot the day pick sauce the red I guess it's very lot yeah yeah which is in the good fuck all well Vincent Harrison mm-hmm. Loma said Liam uh, you can learn from anyone there's a broken clock is is wrong, is right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Speaking yeah. of mentors like that as well, um, Seamus McNoon comes to mind again. That 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 advice of play and meet people and listen to uh, listen widely and 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 draw from all those ingredients to get your own voice. Uh, we're going to finish up now with a, a selection of tunes. But I know Colin, you wanted to yeah. dedicate this to Seamus. Like, talk about having fun. I mean, like yeah. Seamus kind of took me under his wing, and I was about thirteen or fourteen, and. He called to the house and said at seven o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and we'd be west back to Cooley we go. And I wouldn't get home till five o'clock in the morning, you know. Yeah. In the meantime, I would have been standing on a table playing the flute. I would have been dancing. I would have been singing songs in Irish. You name it. Like, you know? So we had great fun, you know. Seamus always had great fun. And he had, a, he had a great way of getting on with young people too, I think. So I'd like to dedicate this and also to a man who's actually sitting here, Mick O'Connor, um, who was also a great help to me as well back in the mid-70s. I remember I was at um, a Skolegsha before the Alarna Flat Kjol in Listol. That was made a huge impact on me. And you, uh, Mick was the um, was the teacher there, and he brought in loads of lads to play for us, to play loads of recordings, and he spoke and, and talked to us. He was walking out of town with us uh, each day, and between himself and Seamus, they were just great, you know, great lads to know when you were fourteen or fifteen, you know. <laughs> and uh, they weren't safe either. <laughs> <laughs> Not a different. Yeah, in case you go into too much detail there, I'll <laughs> on there to, yeah. what, what is the last section, selection of uh, reels you're going to play? Yeah, I'm going to play, um, first of all, it's a tune that, that I learned from Seamus himself, actually. Um, and Seamus, hello, hope you're well. Um, the first one is called John Blessings, and the second one is called The Congress Week. Okay. <laughs>
fair play this. Well, uh, I'd just like to thank everyone uh, who's tuned in here um, this afternoon and maybe who are listening back to this as well. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank uh, the Arts Council of Ireland and the Arts Council of Northern Ireland and the OPW here for, for um, providing um, us with a, play, a home for the, for the Irish Tradition Music Archive. And um, well, most of all, I'd like to thank uh, Con Lagrada and Cuivin O'Farrell, and Gramila Magos. Um, to remind her as well to keep an eye on the ITMA website for Connell's compositions that will be put onto the Sayher series later on this month. And um, hopefully, it won't be the, the last uh, we hear from uh, Connell and Cuivin here in the archive. Gramila Magos, Bert. Great. Right.